Okay, uh, tonight's painting is a painting of the uh, Owyhee River uh, near the Idaho-Oregon border, and it's from a uh, photograph by Eric Munkata. Uh, I'm going to make a few editorial changes. Uh, when you're painting from a photograph, uh, a problem you get into is that photographs really mess with you on value. They don't record accurate values like you would see if you were outside, out in nature painting. So, I'm gonna, so I'll make some changes and I'll explain those changes as I go. You can see I've, I've already toned my canvas and wiped it down really good and then I've divided the canvas into thirds. The photograph up here has the, the uh, horizon line, the water line, is getting awfully close to the middle of the canvas, which I really try to avoid. What I'm going to do is bring that water line down to the bottom third. Now, I want this water to flow towards me, so I'm going to start by you know, just kind of stepping my stepping this water line up so that the water tends, you know, I have to still keep a lot of horizontals so the water lays flat, but I want it to be, I want it to, to go off into the distance. So I'm going to bring this place out here where the, where the water goes, kind of goes around the bend, and I'm going to put that, this other side of the water line right over there. So now I have a little bit of a V which directs the viewer up to this spot right here, which will probably end up being a bit of my center of interest. Now up here I've got some foreground and midground foliage. This foliage that's right above the water. I'm going to just kind of scumble in. I'm just working on my drawing now. I'm not blocking in. And this is, this is, uh, looks like there's some air movement in there. There's not a lot of reflection in the water, but I, I'm going to, I think water looks a lot more interesting if there's some reflection in it. So I'm going to just indicate a little reflection under the, under the shoreline plants over here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Actually, this one is going to come closer to the viewer. I'm going to exaggerate the perspective just a little bit. Get that coming out over here. Get some reflections. Remember, the reflections go straight up and down. No matter what the, no matter what the object is doing above the water line, I put my reflections in with vertical brush strokes. You can already kind of start to see that they're, they're, that they're reflections. Now I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side, get this, this first cliff, comes in, in from the corner, comes down and drops down, and that, that vertical part of the cliff up here then gives way to the, you know, kind of to the rubble that slopes on down into the, uh, the picture, which now this also bring. I'm going to have to do a little bit of altering. I don't want this to be such a severe place where all these edges come together, but I do want us to keep directing the viewer's eye over to there. Now I'm going to just do a little bit of an indication since I've, I've got this side of the hill here. I'll, and I want to put. A, I just want to know where the reflection goes to down here. Now I'm going to drop down, and that next cliff, I'm going to come out and then drop it down and there's just some of the textures of that I'm you know I'm just I just want to get the the loosest sketch I you know I'm not wanting to uh, to really do a lot of, I'm not doing a lot of detail I just want to get some sketches so that I can start to just to kind of get a little bit of an intuitive sense of the landscape now as this cut this also steps down and comes out further and then steps down and, and goes off camera over here, goes off the side. Now I, I'm gonna I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of a another cliff back here. It's not in the photograph, but if I have a strong down downward diagonal here, the viewer might follow that to the next painting in the gallery. So I've got to do something here to get a little bit of an uplift at the edge of the canvas. One thing compositionally to notice here, you know, I've got three, three sections of, of, uh, of the cliff here. It's very easy to get three amigos. And by three amigos, I mean three things that are you know, similar in size, similar in shape, similar in weight. So what I've got, this cliff is this size. Then I've got this smaller cliff here in the middle. So this one's more vertical. This one is kind of diagonal and this one's more horizontal. The way it feeds out across there. And that it's it, it's the way it is in the photograph, but it's also very important compositionally. And 
and let's see how I want to get just a little more indication of where that where the reflections are. So th that is pretty much. Let's see. I'm going to put a few just to indicate where there's a few rocks coming down onto this cliff side here. There's my drawing. You want it, You you don't want to spend a lot of time on your drawing. Uh, I found that the more time I spend on my drawing, the more the more contrived my painting is going to look. I want my painting to have kind of a loose, intuitive feel to it. So now, now I'm going to change to that. This, this is my drawing. Now I'm changing to a little bigger brush. Now, the thing I want to look for in this photograph, the darkest value in this photograph is this rock way back up here in the reference piece. Uh, which I, and I've got kind of also sketched it in that way. I don't want that rock to be the darkest thing in the painting because then that will start to leap ahead of this stuff down here in the foreground. So I'm going to start down here in the foreground and I can see in the photograph there's you know, some brush and rocks and stuff down here in the foreground. I'm taking some of my cool mud and I'm putting a little bit of cool red, cool blue in it and I just I want to get just some some dark shapes down here in the foreground these shapes will get a little lighter as they go back into space. That's kind of where I want my darkest value is down in here. The next thing I see, I'm, and I put, I start out blocking in with my vertical, my vertical shapes first, starting in the foreground and working back. So now I can see all of this, these trees, bush, these small trees, scrub, bush things down here comes, that comes down to the water line. I'll get some of that in and then I'm going to put some of that over in here and I'm going to throw a little bit of that. Now see up here I can you know I can dance my brush all around in these bushes but when I put reflections in I, my reflections only go vertically. The, a, the really simple way to get the effect of water is to have my reflections put in vertically and then I'll when I do the surface tension in the water, I will go over it with horizontal brush strokes. And that generally tends to get that kind of that mirror image surface of the water. On the other side of the river, as this goes back, this, this side the foliage goes back and see, see I've put just a little more blue and a little bit of white in my mixture. And the reason for that is, as things go back into space, they get lighter. Hence the white that I'm adding into, the, into these bushes. Go, there's also more air between me and that object. So if there's more air between me and the object, that air bounces around a lot of blue light. Now, I don't see a lot of that blue light in the photograph, but the painting follows different rules than the photograph. With the photograph, you believe the photograph just kind of naturally because it's, because it's a photograph. If I paint it that way, as a painting, I have to tell the viewer what's going on. As a photograph, they will automatically believe it. Now, so these trees stuff go back, and I'm leaving this, leaving that little area out there. That's the lands flowing down, down to that surface. Okay, now, now what I want to do, now I'm taking some, some of my cool mud, and, and I'm, I want to. I'm just. Kind of, I want to kind of just intuitively look at these rock shapes. I want to gradually putting in the shapes of these rocks. The reason for that: these rocks are standing vertical, so I'm putting them in next. And I want these rocks to be a little bit lighter. See the, See how dark my darks are down here. These rocks are lighter, and they're lighter because they're going back into space. They can also now that I've got them started there. Now I'm going up the hill. These can be lighter and also I've put a little more blue in there because there's more atmosphere with, with, between me and these rocks as I go up. As I go up into the, this upper area, that slope is going away from me. So I want that slope. These rocks get lighter and bluer as they go up the hill. Okay, now I'm going to make them even a little, a little more bluer and a little lighter as I go back to this cliff. And see, I, it helps to start right up here next to, I would say, and I probably could make that just a tiny bit lighter. I want to know exactly what my contrast is between these two cliffs. So I don't start out here and work back that way. I start next to that cliff and work out. 
Now, as I can see that there's, there's these steps of sandstone or whatever it is that come down the hill. And I, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to meticulously put all that stuff in. I want to get it loose and intuitive. I want to have, I want it to have the sense that it's just, I, I, I want the spontaneity. Now, back here, this cliff too can be just a little bit lighter, but not by much. If the, the further you go back, the smaller the value steps. I'm just looking at the shapes in the, there's all the, all this strata of rock. And I want to get, and I've got to break that up. And then there's more of that rock that comes down here at the bottom of the cliffs. Okay, and now, let's see, a step I for, kind of forgot, I've got to go back and backtrack a bit. I want to get some of this, I'm going to go back and get this mud that I put these rocks in with, and I just want to get some of that down here in the water. And again, it's just, I'm just randomly putting this in. It's, I don't have to have these reflections real accurate. I just want to have vertical brush strokes picking up the colors that are going to be up there. So now, now I've got to come down with these, with this lighter blue color from here, and I'll just, when things are back that far away, I, you know, I don't have to have it accurate. I just have to have some of that color down here in the water. I guess that's my vert, those are my vertical values. I've got the rocks, the cliffs. Now, the, as, I, as, I, as I paint, I start, see my foreground verticals are my darkest value. My background verticals just keep getting lighter and lighter as they go back. Then the next value up is my horizontals, which in this case will be slopes. So what I've got to do now, now I'm going to take some white and some of this, uh, this land is, I've got to mix up a little mud to neutralize this, but this is mostly going to be cool red, my cool red and my cool yellow. It's, uh, the red gives me the, the color of the earth and the uh, yellow gives me the color of, you know, kind of the dead dead grasses. I don't want to go too yellow or I'll have just kind of a, that mustard yellow look which isn't, isn't a real pleasant color. So I want, I want to air a little bit on the side of red. So what I'm doing now is filling in, filling in this slope in the foreground. And see this, see, working this way, my foreground verticals are my darkest value. Background verticals get lighter and lighter and lighter. And then when I do the horizontals, which in this case is the slope, it gets lighter again. I'm only working one direction in value. Each, each step of the value that I put on is lighter than the last step. So I don't end up having to sandwich myself somewhere between two values and then have to stop and spend a lot of time meticulously mixing paint. Uh, now I've got that, this cliff blocked in. Now I've got to come down here and get this color in my water reflections. And down here in the water reflections, I don't want to leave spaces between my colors. I want to be sloppy and I want to mush color right into color. It's important with, these, uh, with the water to have pretty thick wet paint in the water. So that when you come over it with the uh, horizontal brush strokes for the reflect, you know, for the surface tension of the water, you'll move paint. If you have areas between the colors where the canvas is dry, you can't move paint. It'll start looking like you dry brushed it. It won't look wet. Okay, now I have to go back to that next step. So what I'm going to do now, just like the cliffs, I'm going to add. I'm adding a little bit of blue and a little bit of white. It's still, I still want that orange color, but I want a little, now that's, that's, let's see here. Now my lights, my verticals are, get lighter and they get darker and, or, I mean, they're starting at the front get dark, get lighter and lighter as they go back. My horizontals can actually do just the opposite. They can get lighter and lighter as they go back. And that helps me to have less contrast in the background. So that, and the less contrast helps the painting to have depth. 
And see, I have, I have not at all tried to, to paint cliffs or rocks or anything. I'm just getting shapes blocked in. If I start painting things, I'll start looking like an amateur illustrator. Not to mean, not, not to mean that these are going to be super professional, but, uh, but, I, but I don't want them to be amateur illustration. I want, I want this to be oil painting. So now I've got to take this color that's back there in the cliffs and smear that vertically again. All of my, uh, all of my brush strokes are vertical. Okay, and then my lat, now, now I'm going to uh, one, more vert one more horizontal step. I'm, what I'm going to do here is, this is actually horizontal. It's not the diagonal, so it's one step lighter again. So this, this piece of land coming down to the water. Now hopefully you can start to see the picture forming now. Even though it's very, very loose, I have not tried to paint any, any kind of uh, detail into it. Now over here, on this side where I've got that uh, hill in the background, what I'm going to do here I think is just, I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm just going to let that, I could actually make it a little cliff coming in from the left. So it gives, also gives the sense of the water going around the bend back there. Now I'm on to the lightest value, my lightest value being the sky. So I'm going to take some white, and I'm going to take a little bit of my warm blue, test a little bit of it right there. The bottom of the sky is, I start with my warm blue, that's, that's the viridian if you've seen my other videos. And I start at the bottom, the bottom of my sky with warm. The sky is warmest at the bottom, and then it gradually gets lighter and cooler as it goes up. And this side of the sky is going to be a little lighter and warmer as well. Now my sky will get a little bit darker and a little bit cooler. I'm adding just a little bit of cool blue to this. And it'll get, so as, as the sky goes to the left, goes away from the light, I, I want it to get cooler and darker. And what I do a lot of times, like in this photograph, there are no clouds, which is kind of like Idaho is a lot of times, Idaho and uh, Eastern Oregon. But I'm gonna go ahead, I, th there's too much sky there for there not to have a little bit of interest. So what I'm gonna do in my sky I'm going to take some white, put a tiny bit of warm red, and a tiny bit of warm yellow in it. And then I'll try it here. Let's see here. Yeah, there. Now I'm gonna. I want that to be a little lighter, a little yellower. It's always good to put a, some little tiny brush strokes on. To, uh, to test the color first. So I just, since I've, I've got a real, it's a real sunny day, so I'm just putting a few little clouds. In. Okay, so now my painting, the painting is blocked in. I don't want to see anything finished. I don't want to see cliffs. I don't want to see sky. I don't want to see rocks. All I want to see is the sense of atmosphere. Does, does the painting, when I look at it, when I step back and look at it, does it go back into space? Now see, the, on the reference piece, photographs really tend to flatten things out. See, there's, there's very, very little difference in value between this hillside and that hillside, even though that one is, you know, is you know, half a mile back uh, or more. So now I, I block my painting in from the uh, from front to back. I started I started down here with my foreground darks, went lighter and lighter and lighter, and then my horizontals lighter, and then my sky lightest. And I think one of the things I, I want to do right now, I'm just I just realized I, I want to have just a little bit of the sky color down here in in the bottom. It doesn't have to 
correspond to anything. I just need some of that color down there. So now, if I'm outside painting, the you know the sky was blocked in last, and I finish it first. I finish it first because if I'm outside painting in 10 minutes or less, it's going to be a different sky. So I want to block it in, finish it while I've got it there, and then I can go on to other things. Now, my sky, I don't want it, you know, I want there to be a gradual shift from lighter, warmer, down here, to darker, cooler, as it goes up to the left. But I don't want it blended. I want a lot of little steps in color. And so you can do that by, see, now I can get some warm color on my brush, and then I can go up here and put a few brush strokes in. Up here I can get some cool, darker color in my brush, and then I can go down here and put a few in. I just want to have a lot of steps. I want to have an interesting, I want to have an interesting sky, not a smoothly blended sky. A smoothly blended sky will just bore the viewer. So as I come forward, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, I want this to be a little bluer back here. This, this little thing I put in back here, and all this is, is a stop. It's to stop the viewer's eye from sliding down that hillside and going to the next painting in the gallery. <clears throat> okay, so the, now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take out a smaller brush, and I'm going to uh, do that. Okay, so now I, now I finished that one back there. And let's see here. I'm just going to do a little touch on that to try to get a little vertical top notch like these other ones have. <clears throat> okay, so now, now I'm going to concentrate on this, this mountain back here. What I'm going to do now, this is a desert, a desert painting. One of the things that happens in this country a lot, the sky straight above is really dark, cool blue, and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and warmer as it comes down. And then right before the sky tucks below the horizon, there's a red shift. And I'm only going to put this in in the, this, this lowest part of the sky right here. That red shift, if you, if you haven't seen it, go out, you know, go out into nature and look for it. It's the layer of dust in the atmosphere. Sometimes it'll, it'll, it will look more brown than red, but it's just a, it's a red shift right before it tucks below the horizon. So now what I want to do is I, gotta, I want to get back I got to mix up some of this color of my rocks again. It's good in the beginning to mix a bunch of color so you don't have to go back and keep remixing. On the other hand, if you do go back and remix, a lot of times you, you get a lot more you get some really interesting variations. And one of the things I'm trying to do with my paintings now too is to make them thicker. I, I think one of the weaknesses of my paintings is the paint is not on thick enough. So that's one of the things I want to practice. And now, see, and what I'm doing now is I'm just going through and I'm, I'm glancing up at the reference piece so that I can see, I can get ideas of where I need to put these shapes, but I don't want to study it enough to get it, re, you know, I don't want a real photographic rendition of this. I want, I want to sculpt this in paint. So that means I want to leave a lot of it fairly intuitive. These darker areas are vertical. So what, I'm using a lot of vertical brush strokes in these areas. In, in the vertical parts of this cliff, I have to keep glancing back up. You know, I, and I'm, looking, I'm not looking at the cliff when I glance back up at the reference piece. I'm looking at the shapes. I'm looking, you know, where do I put the next brush stroke of this color? I'm not trying to paint rocks. I'm trying to lay down brushwork that the viewer will use to create the rocks. Okay, so there I've, there I've got, got quite a bit of that done. Now, I think what I want to do, since the light is coming from over there, I'm going to, I'm not going to go, I'm not going warm yet, but I think, I, I, but I need, I need some highlights. So I'm taking some cool red, a little, let's see, that's, I think I need to neutralize that just a little bit, a little more white. And I'm going to put just a little bit of blue in it. And the, uh, yeah, that's, that's starting to get there. 
So now what I want to, you know, I just want, I want some, just some variation, a few little highlights so that the viewer thinks they're seeing uh, the, paint, the, the sculpted painting, when in fact they're just seeing loose brushwork that they're using to create the picture. And then I think now I'm, now I'm going to come over and try a little bit, I'm gonna, I want to put a little bit of warmth on it. Now rock, rocks, with using your warm colors, it's real interesting because your warm colors, you can't use much white. However, if you're painting a rock surface, you can use white because rocks reflect light. I want the light coming from the right. So out here on the tips of these cliffs, I want to, every place I do, I do some of this lighter, warm, reddish color is going to be where the light is hitting, where the sunlight is hitting the cliff. So I, I'm hoping on the camera you can, you can see this. And see, I'm just dancing my brush around. I'm letting the brush, yeah, see, yeah, there. Now, now I've got to, now I want to go back. There's a few places where I, oh, I kind of overdid the, uh, now let's see here. I'm going to, a little too much color right in there. There's some places where I kind of overdid some of those highlights. So I want to tuck some of that darkness back in there. Okay, so there's, that's kind of the, that's that last, that's, that's my verticals on that furthest back cliff. Okay, so what I need to do now is get some of this reflection stuff down here in the water. And I, you know, and I don't, that stuff's far enough back there. I don't have to, you know, put the reflections exactly where they should be. I just have to have some of that in the water. Okay, now I'm going to go back, find this color, the, the land, a little more yellow and white in that, I think. And now I'm putting in the horizontals. And now one of the things I've, I've left out is there's a, there's a horizontal edge at the, the top of this cliff. There's some horizontal stuff that just kind of slides down there some stuff over there and now you notice my brush strokes on the on the uh, the cliffs my brush strokes were going vertical now i'm going horizontal it help i find it helpful if you can kind of pretend that your brush is a knife and that you're carving things so see i'm having to take my brush strokes in the direction of the land so I'm just kind of repeating those shapes, getting thicker paint on. And I'm liking the way that, that cliff is looking. Now, if the light is coming from the right, now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm not cleaning my brush out that well, but I'm, I'm going to uh, mix up a little bit of warm, of white with some warm yellow and a little warm red. And then I'll put some little highlights on the land when I what ha, this is this is where the uh, the light is hitting the land if the lights coming from over here then it's going to be hitting some ridges that See, it's just what, what you want when people look at your brush, at your painting up close, you want them to see brush strokes, not things. You let, let them invent the things out of the brush strokes. Now, that, I figure that that back, that back part is about, oh, it's about 60-70% complete, which is just perfect. I don't want to take it any closer than that. Let the viewer take it from there. Okay, now, now I'm coming up, I'm taking a step forward, and 
I want this cliff, the, the darks in this cliff are going to be a little darker than the darks in that cliff. So, and I, I didn't, I don't think I got them quite dark enough. So, let's see here. So now, yeah, that's going to come down, then it'll be down over there. I've got another row of cliffs down in here. So now I've got, now I've got my darks, let's see, do I, yeah, I need a few more darks down here in the bottom, a little rocky. Okay, now, now what I'm going to do is, now I'm going back, getting up into this, this area here where I, I've got to get the, now it's the, the diagonal land. And so what I'm going to do here is, Got to make that a little lighter. This, because I want this land to be a little lighter than that land. It's closer to the viewer, so there's more light reflecting to the viewer's eye. So now, I haven't quite got it there yet. It's, so I want a little, nice little demarcation there between the, the two cliffs. Now, this cliff up here, there's some of this color on the very top. And then I can see this, there's some stuff coming down. I, this was just, I, I left just the vertical parts of this cliff when I blocked it in, now I've got to come back and remedy some of that. I'm going to uh, just kind of darken and blue a little bit of this as this comes up to this cliff, the cliff that's in the foreground. I want this to tuck behind this cliff. So I'm darkening it a little right along this edge. And now I've got it kind of where I want it now, but where I want it, but now I've got to put the highlights. I've got to put light hitting the cliff. So now, if I can, let's see, I'll put some of this. See, so this cliff is getting lighter and yellower as it gets, you know, as it gets out here. Now, before I, I can't really see that yet, so what I'm going to have to do is go to the cliffs now, instead of the diagonals. Now, I want light to hit this cliff right here. So, and then I'm going to come down here and See how that, see how that, the, I can now, I'm now bringing this cliff in, I'm bringing this cliff in front of that one by using a little more intense colors. It's kind of the same, I'm using kind of the same colors, but these are a little brighter, a little lighter. The color's a little more saturated in this area to, to the front. And see, I'm not trying to make the cliffs. I'm just trying to throw brush strokes in there that will, that will help the viewer to create the cliffs. The more the viewer participates in the creation of the painting, the more apt they are to buy it. Let's see here. Yeah, I've got to, I'm going to come down. I've got, I had a rock in there, which is in the, kind of in the wrong place. And see, there, there's, I've paid a little more attention to detail on this, this particular piece 
on this this cliff instead of the, you know over the top of that one. Now I still need to make this a little bit lighter here. I'm not satisfied with this edge right here. So see how that bringing that brighter color out helps this cliff to stand in front of that one. And now you can see you can see this cliff, these all look this all looks like it runs together the same cliff. What I'm doing here is trying to make this one come towards the viewer. And now what I've got to do here is just put some of these colors in. And this Okay, so you, I, I, I hope on camera that you can see that this, this is a little bit, that this does translate as coming closer to the viewer. Now one of the things I think I need to do in here is I'm going to darken some of these darks just a little more. I, these darks need to be all, all the darks in here need to be darker than the darks in that cliff. Now, I, to me, this cliff definitely steps out now. This one steps in front of that one. Now what I have to do, now I'm, I'm still now I'm coming forward, and now I have to do, I've got this cliff, this foreground cliff, which is going to be my, my darkest darks and my lightest lights will be on this cliff. So... And this, this cliff, as it comes towards the viewer, like even over in here, it gets, it's going to get darker. Everything gets a little darker as it comes towards the viewer. Now I want to get, I've got to get, you can see all these little, all these little spotlights of canvas tone that I didn't get covered with my, uh, with my block in. And I want to, I'm just wanting to get most of those covered up. Those can really interfere with uh, your, your perception of space. And I just you know, I want these to kind of come down. And then I'll put you know, a little more of this. This will help me get just a little thicker paint in a few places down here in the water. And I've got those coming down, so I'm going to... Okay. Now I think, let's see, shall I go... I think I'll go ahead and put some, uh, put some light on the cliffs now. I wanna, you know, these, these I can... This, this cliff on the left... I can sculpt that a lot more than, than the ones in the back. This, the, this cliff is it's a lot closer, so I have, to, I have to put a lot more of the illusion of detail on it. That's too red, so I'm going to put a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. I may put a little bit of warm mud in it to knock it down just a little. No, it's still a little more red. Okay, so now let's see here. So what I'm doing now, I, I'm I'm really not trying to. Well, in a very simple way, I'm kind of emulating the shapes in the photograph. But it's more that I'm just trying to get some interesting textures and brush strokes. I, I want. You know, it doesn't matter if I try to illustrate that cliff. I'm going to probably end up boring the viewer. So I want to just. I try more to concentrate, and this is something I notice the more I paint. I'm trying more to put use rhythms and use interesting brush strokes to delineate things rather than trying to accurately paint them. And this way, the the viewer I want to stimulate the viewer to create the picture. And what I'm doing now is I'm just using this warm to throw brush strokes on what would be the sunlit side of the rocks, and I'm doing this with warm colors. And I'm doing it, I'm letting it be pretty random. The more random I can make it, generally the better it turns out, I've found. The, more, the looser I can, I can leave it. And now I just want to get, I just want to get a little bit of this color down here in the water. 
now I'm going to go to the to the grassy hillside and again I'm going to do this with with I'm putting I'm going to put it back in again with cool yellow cool red and some white and just get a little more a little more yellow into it so it so that it I'm going to try to throw a little bit in here that way I can I, I want a little bit of this color worked into here I don't want all of a sudden a different all of a sudden a whole different color here and now one of the things I'm going to do is I want this hillside to kind of fold around out of the light a little bit so what I'm going to do is as I come around here I'm, I'm going to add just a little bit of blue into this a little cool blue into it Let's see is this oh this is the color I was doing so that it starts to come around the corner let's see here get a little more and see I'm not I hope you can see that I'm not painting rocks I'm not painting foliage I'm not painting cliffs I'm, I'm just making rhythms in the paint to try to create the illusion of light hitting this objects now you can see it's starting to get a little cooler as it comes around now I'm going to darken it a little more So you can kind of see the rock, you can see the rock kind of starting to turn a little bit there. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I've got here, and I'm liking what I've got here. I'm not liking what I've got there. And I think what I need, that hillside right here is awfully yellow. And I think I, what I have to do is put a little more, you know, this has got more red in it. And so I think I have to put a little more red in that. Uh, yellow can be a really harsh color, and the the, the reds t do tend to soften things. And see how see how this cliff also starts out here on the edge with light, warm, and then it folds around, getting darker as it comes around. Now I've got to work this area of the the front of the uh, of the uh, the shoreline. And now as the shoreline goes back, I'm I'm just taking this this lighter bluer color and putting just kind of some indications of foliage as it goes back. And then as that comes forward, I want I want it to become more and more green. I'm going to use a little bit of red in it. I've one of the things I've found is almost all greens almost always need a little bit of a of an element of red in them to get them to read correctly and I want to just want to make sure these are really irregular and also that I get really good re these are really close to the surface of the water so I, so I want to get really good refle reflections and now as I come forward I'm adding more blue and yellow I want these to be more green as they come forward. And that green works, like I say, works better if I put a little bit of red in it. So see how that, how that, uh, A little mud, a little more red. I want to see these these tree these bushes get darker and greener as they come forward. And then down here, I've got a 
want to make sure I get reflections in. And then I'm going to come over here. This, this I don't think really needs much work up in here. As that slopes down to the water. But this is these bushes over here on the right, these are the closest things to the viewer. So that one, this particular bush right here on the lower right is, is the closest thing to the viewer. And then I want to get make sure I get reflections. I don't want any dry canvas on this. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to take I'm just going to take some of my cool mud and fuss with some shoreline stuff. Just kind of break up this area where the where the foliage meets the water. And this is going to be particularly dark over here because the light is coming from behind those bushes. Now on this side, now that I've got that dark shadow area in, now I'm going to uh, I'm going to put a little bit, just a few little indicators. It's where the land kind of comes out from under these trees a little bit. And Because the, the light will hit the surface over here, but it won't over there. Okay, so there the, the landscape is pretty much done. And now it's, now it's getting the water. The, the water, now the, 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 more, the more you look off in the distance at the water, like you know, you're looking, you're really just seeing, all you're going to see there is, you know, here you're looking more down into the water. Back there you're looking at the surface. And the surface back there is going to reflect that color. I'm just going to take some white and some warm blue. So of course I immediately mix it too dark. I've got this the color of the sky, the warm blue. And I'm just going to back here. And I may put a, let's see I've got a, this little. Okay, so what I'm what I'm doing now is I'm taking that that the color of the sky back there. That's the color that that is reflecting down here in the water. And I'm just going to get a little bit of this started here in the background. Then. I'm going to just start getting just what I want to do now is I want the paint you know I want some areas where the paint I can see it but for the most part I want to smear the paint that's already on the canvas especially like when I get across reflections over here so you can see now see now you can start to see the reflections are disappearing down into the water. See, I don't need the, ref the reflections don't need to be well painted. I just need to have the colors that are in the painting above present in the water. Now, as you come down into the painting, as I come down, I, I now I want to add a little more well, I want to get a little bit of cool blue into my into this cross hatching here. The cool blue, because what I'm doing down here at the bottom of the painting, the reflections here are reflecting the sky that is above the painting. And I don't want to have just some random stuff. I want to, I'm going to get some of this in and then I'm going to go back and throw a little bit of composition into this. See, I may, I may want, now I'm going to, this is a little bit, a little bit ugly right in here. What I can do, now I'm going to, I think I'm going to, Go back and I want to lighten some of this. And I've got, I've got the water flowing across here. 
And then maybe I'll take the water back on the, across the other side of the, of the stream here. And I can take it back there and then, and then bring it back here again. Get, get some of that just meandering feeling to the water. And where up here I use, you know, I just really use the, uh, you know, I seldom use the tip of the brush, but I just use the tip to get that fine line. Down here I'm smearing the broad side of the brush because it's much closer. This is one of the ways I can kind of get the perspective, get the, get, get the water going back into space. And then over in here, on this other side, now I can take... I'm going to take some cool blue and just get some a little bit of reflection along, or a little bit of surface tension along the shoreline. But, but that's the light is from behind those bushes, so I want it cool here, and I want things warm over here, it's because the, the light is hitting along this side. As I'm looking at that, I could probably now, right now I'm taking my warm blue, some warm yellow, I put a little bit of warm red in it, and I think now I want to put, I'll just get some warm, some warm highlights hitting these bushes on the other side of the river. And again, I don't, you know, I don't want to paint, I don't want to paint bushes and trees and stuff. I just want to throw some smeared paint down so the viewer will create it. Now the sun is behind these bushes, but some would penetrate down in. I just need something here to give, so these aren't just a silhouette of bushes. So that looks like that's it. Another one done. Another one bites the dust. It is desert, you know. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah, I think so.